Hey everyone, Retire on Dividends here, back to make another weekly update to my options trading journey. Um, I'm going to do this with my two-year-old in the background, so let's hope for the best. So I did have some options expiring, um, um, you know, this past Friday, but on Monday, uh, they were all super cheap to close. So I had an SOXL put, well, two, I had two SOXL puts. And I had two TSLL puts. So if you look, the premium I got per share, 50 cents, 58 cents, 36 cents, 39 cents. I was able to close them the Monday and I kept uh, 50, over 50% of the premium on all transactions. So since I'm able to close them, I'm able to then use all of that cash that I put up front during the week. So to me, it was a no brainer because I was able, again, I captured anywhere from 58% up to 63% on all four of them. So all four were a buy to close. And then you can see um, when all said and done, here are the annualized uh, yields that I got. Biggest one was the TSLL put at 359%. So that was Monday. And then uh, throughout the week, I was selling puts. It was a green week. So it wasn't easy. I, I, you know, I did find some red here and there. So first thing I sold a put on TNA, and I did a 42 strike, and it was a scary area for TNA to be honest. But I have sold puts um, for TNA at a 42 strike previously, and I got assigned. And you know what? It worked out just fine for me. So I, I said, you know what? What the hell? So I sold a put on TNA, 42 dollar strike. I got. At the time, it was 4.68% out of the money, um, and it also, it expired the following week. So this went out essentially almost two weeks. At the time, it looks like 11 contract days. So for my troubles, I got a dollar eight per share or $108 in premium. And I ha in the end, I fronted 4,200, which gave me an annualized interest rate of 85%. Again, apologize for the noise in the background. Uh, but my, I had to make this video now. There's no other time today, really. Um, and my two-year-old's with me at the moment. The next put I sold was on uh, TSLL. Again, all, all these puts go out to 10-4, which is the following Friday. I chose a strike of 12 because, again, I don't care if I get assignment. It was still out of the money by 6.69%. I got $0.62 cents per share or $62. And that had an annualized... Uh, yield of 188%. Next put, I sold on TNA um, again, and I chose a strike of 40. So I brought it down a little bit, and I didn't get as much as the first put. I got 56 cents per share, or $56. This one yielded me 56% versus the original, which yielded me 85%. So I'll take it. And then I did two TSLL puts. One at 11, one, oh no, I'm sorry, three. One at 11, one at 13, and one at 12.50. Um, again, getting a little more aggressive because I want to be assigned because I want to sell calls. Various yields, 84%, 238%, and 237%. We'll see, we'll see how it plays out. And last but not least, uh, I believe this is on Friday, I sold a put. On SOXL, I said, what the hell? It was the only thing that was red, and I was getting, you know, it's hard for me to not do an options trade at all for the day. So, but I ended up getting one in, 6.96% out of the money. I chose a $35 strike price, uh, premium per share, 92 cents. So I got an additional $92. Annualized yield on that one, 137%. So... Overall, another really good week. No, you know, again, I don't have any sh shares, no assignment. I'm not sure why he has to be extra loud when I'm making the video. But either way, whatever. Um, so, so far for the month of September, I have made $1,631. That puts me at a total of $5,000. I've made a total of $5,000 in options premium since I started in February which is pretty freaking amazing uh, because, you know, on, I, this does not even include, I did, I have made capital gains um, during this will strategy, but I'm not even counting that because I don't really shoot for that. If I get it, I get it. Um, I don't take capital hits, so I never lose capital. 
uh, but I do get capital gains, but I'm just focused on the premium income because this is what I'm going to live off of, this and the dividend income. Um, I was not able to capture TSL's L's recent di uh, distribution because I was not assigned any. So unfortunately, this quarter, uh, I'm getting diddly squat. Uh, talked to uh, Rex shares yesterday, by the way. Uh, they have many leveraged funds, you know, similar to these. And they said their goal is really not to pay out a distribution. But if they have to, they only pay it on an annualized basis. So I thought that was very interesting. I'm not sure if anyone trades um, on their funds. All right, so based on that, uh, let's go to the wheel tab. So TSLL, again, if I go to the top, there's no tickers assigned. Uh, apologize if I sound funny. I'm getting sick, unfortunately. Uh, but TSLL, I have a put party. I got 11, a 12, a 12.50, and a 13 for next week. If I get squeezed in 11.50 on Monday, I'll, I'll gladly do that. All right, so that's for TSLL. Close that out, and let's go to TNA. TNA, uh, again, no, uh, nothing assigned, so I don't own any shares. And I have a put party for next week, two puts, 40 and a 42. Again, a little more expensive, you know, $8,200 locked up in these puts, but that's okay. Let's keep going. Bitex, I got nothing going on. SOXL, I do. Again, we don't own anything. And we got a lonely ass put party of 35. Um, again, market's been pretty green, so... Do I want assignment on any of these? Of course. Do I want assignment on all of these? Well, I mean, preferably two of the three, not all three. Because then if I have to average down on all of them, it'll take up a little more of the capital than I, you know, than I wanted to. All right. So also, I didn't, I didn't go through my, uh, typically I show you guys my watch list. So I trade, and you guys know this, but for newer viewers, I trade TSLL, Bitex, SOXL, and TNA on a regular basis. Uh, this week, I was not able to trade sell puts on Bitex because it was way too green, way too much upside this week. Uh, CLSK and Mara, they're just there in case, but I'm probably going to delete them off of my, uh, you know what, I'm going to delete them now. So we're, we'll do this together. I don't really want to trade them, so... Um, Let's move on. I, in fact, I'd rather overpay for TQQQ and UPRO than trade them. All right, so here, these are my, these are the, uh, the ETFs I'm comfortable doing options with. The ones in blue I am doing, and the ones in gray I will do when I can afford. Because yes, I feel mu much more comfortable doing the bottom three on a normal help. basis because help. these are indexes. Help. He's saying help. All right, one second. Okay. All right, that didn't work. All right, anyway, um, so let's move on. Let's go to the 2024 income. So this is where I track week to week how much I've made. I've been sharing this on um, my, my uh, social media. But when I started, my premium income was only $35 uh, for the week. And obviously, you know, I, I used like $1,000 capital. At the time, I was like, let me, let me uh, ease my way in because, again, I got back into options a lot later on. In the beginning, I started options with GameStop, AMC, and I kind of got my ass kicked, so I took a break. But I consider these leveraged funds actually much safer than those. So anyway, as time went on, we got to April, I, I you know, over $100 for the week. And then in June, I made over $200. Um, and then in August, I made over 300 and in September this month, I made over $500 and this past week I made $474, which is pretty awesome. Um, and I had to put up capital of 16,550, which is not all that bad. Also, I did add an annualized income. So if I make $474 a week, what does that come to annually? It comes to $24,648. I obviously cannot retire on that, so it gives me an idea of you know what to expect and how much I could make. The five hundred was my best week. That would be twenty nine thousand a year. Uh, yeah, can't retire on that uh, with a family of four. Definitely not, especially with a two and eight year old. All right, retire on options hypothetical tab. Here we go. My rate of return, my average rate of return. If I go here, right. 
This takes the average of all of the different annualized returns back from February, right? So if I take all of them, my average annualized rate of return is 247%. So that's obviously awesome, but also unrealistic, right? So this is why, all right, so based on 247%, I only need $80,000 to make an annualized income of 200,000, right? But obviously understanding that's real, not realistic. You know, I made some others as my child is t touching the TV. This is the same child who smashed the TV with his toy not that long ago. All right, we're almost done. Bear with me, guys. Uh, so I did add mid capital and high capital, which essentially would take, all right, um, you know, saying I need, where's the formula? This formula right here. So it takes C2, low capital, and it multiplies that by D3, 75%, right? So this is basically saying, um, you know, realistically, I, I have to think of if I could yield 185%, okay, maybe that's a more realistic number. And then the other one is that I multiply it by 50%. So I, I think 50% would be the worst case. So if I made worst case hundred, if I had one hundred sixty one thousand, I think I can make two hundred thousand easily. It's just my opinion. Um, again, these are risky um, ETFs to play with, which is why I get so much premium. So if the market tanks and they have any type of insane, you know, news, Tesla has terrible news, or I don't know, we we go to another war, then it's just it won't be pretty, but. You know, that's the, that's the risk. That's the risk we take. But anyway, hypothetical, low capital, 80000 high capital, 161000 to to make 200000 a year. It's like my two-year-old knows what I'm doing, and he's purposely being a massive pain in the you-know-what. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, guys, so that's the update for my options trading journey for the week. I had a really fun week. Also, if you're not involved in the Discord, we have an options channel in the Discord. Yeah. It's active all week, even on the weekends. And if you want to learn options, I recommend joining that channel because there's many people that know, you know, that know their stuff, various strategies, a lot of good people to talk to. So I'd recommend joining the Discord um, and you know, having a chat with some people. Obviously, I'm there. If there's any channel I'm in, it's that one. So uh, it's a blast. But anyway, guys, none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you were entertained. If not, we will try again next week. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoy this content, please hit the like button. If you would like to help the channel further, feel free to share this video with friends and family who are interested in learning about investing or even options obviously options is uh you know kind of the i don't know i feel like people are scared of it like even like base people who know investing just they just they just want no part of it but i think we need to spread the love you know we need to teach all of our friends and family about it so they understand it okay that's a mouthful let me attend to my two-year-old and i apologize if he was a uh, disruption in the background with the baby toys and all but hopefully you can hear most of it. If not, next week, hopefully I can get back in the garage. All right, guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Later.